Greetings citizens. Hey you, hey you beautiful creepy little human being you. Welcome to my channel and welcome to today's morbid makeup video. I'm so happy that we could meet like this. I'm so happy that you and I were able to find each other on this cute little earthly rotation. My name is Brittany or Bratterstein, whichever you prefer, and today we're going to be discussing the murder of Bobby Jo Stinnett, a woman who, when she was eight months pregnant, she was strangled to death, and her unborn baby was cut from her womb and kidnapped by a woman named Lisa Montgomery. Yeah, this is an intense one. But before we get started, if you have not yet had the pleasure please make sure to join the brat pack by subscribing and ringing the bell because i put out a new morbid makeup video every single week and i would love to hang out with you i would love it if you would join our group and become one of us one of us one of us one of us and now that we're done with that pesky but totally necessary self-promotion let's get into this story so this is a heavy subject, and initially I wasn't really sure I was going to cover this case, but I did receive a request from a subscriber named Tajalvi. Sorry if I pronounced that wrong, so thank you Tajalvi for the suggestion, and due to that suggestion, we are now covering this video. So, you know what, without any further ado, come gather around and let me tell you the story of the murder of Bobby Jo Stinnett, the abduction of her unborn baby, and the aftermath surrounding the murderer and kidnapper, Lisa Montgomery. Bobby Joe Stinnett was born Bobby Joe Potter on December 4th, 1981, making her a Sagittarius. She was raised and lived her entire life in a little city called Skidmore, Missouri. And when I say that this was like a small town little city, it was small. I googled the population of this area and as of 2019 there were less than 200 people who lived in Skidmore, Missouri. So super super small town. Super small town feel when you say everyone knew everyone. Everyone knew everyone here. Bobby Jo was known to be a shy girl but was super friendly and personable once you got to know her and just overall sounded like a good well-liked person. No enemies just like you know, a good person, a good average girl living in a small town. So Skidmore was her whole life. She spent, you know, her childhood there. She grew up there. She went to high school there. She graduated from there. And once she graduated from high school, she immediately started working at a Kawasaki manufacturing plant that was just 25 minutes away from Skidmore in a neighboring city of Maryville. Though Bobby Joe's day job was at the manufacturing plant, Bobby Joe's real passion and where she found her joy and where she was trying to make the bulk of her income, where she was trying to make a name for herself, was actually breeding and selling rat terriers, which is a type of dog, and she was really well known amongst the online forums of other people who were interested in breeding, selling, discussing these specific dogs. And I know that, um, real quick, I know that some people will have an opinion on Bobby Joe as a person due to the fact that she was a breeder. I know personally I am aggressively anti-breeder myself, um, but I would just like you, if you are like me, to keep in the back of your mind that that doesn't make her deserving at all of what happens to her, obviously. I feel like that shouldn't need to be said, but you know, some people suck, and um, what happens to her is just completely terrible so just anyway in april of 2003 when bobby joe potter was just 21 years old she married a man named zeb stinnett turning herself into bobby joe stinnett which is you know how we know her today and just a year later almost a year exactly later the two learned that they were expecting their first ever baby and they were over the moon, just like any other parent would, would be um, that wanted children. They were very excited to learn that they were going to be starting a family. So Bobby, Joe, and Zeb, they were really excited about being parents. And in the months leading up to Bobby Joe's murder, they were excitedly, you know, planning on being parents, buying stuff that the baby would need, just getting ready. And Bobby Joe, who was no stranger to posting online, because remember she was always in those forums, um, was ex excitedly posting about her pregnancy and updates on her pregnancy online. And she even posted these updates in the terrier, the rat terrier forums, because she had a virtual group of friends there and she was excited to share this news. 
So now we're going to fast forward a little bit to December 15th of 2004. Bobby Jo Stinnett at this point is about a month away from her due date to give birth to her baby. So she's eight months pregnant and she receives a message from a woman named Darlene Fisher who expresses interest in the rat terrier puppies that Bobby Joe is selling. So she reaches out to her through the rat terrier forum group and is like, hey, you know, I live less than an hour away. I would really love to come over and like look at these puppies and see if there's one that I would like to purchase. So Bobby Joe informs this woman, Darlene, that she is available um, to have a meeting. And so the two schedule this meeting for the following day, Thursday, December 16th, 2004. And Bobby Joe Stinnett gives this woman her actual home address. And as soon as I read this, when I was looking into this case, immediately I was just like, oh. like, no, man, you always, if you're going to meet a stranger first off, let's not, because people, I don't trust anybody. I'm not meeting any strangers, but I say as a person who met my husband on the internet, but anyway, um, a public place, right? You meet in a public place. You do everything you can to keep yourself safe. You don't bring a stranger into your home, but you know, it is what it is. But as soon as I read that, it immediately made my heart sink. Cause I was just like, Bobby Joe. That's such a bummer, you know? The following day, December 16th, 2004, at approximately 12.30 p.m., a 36-year-old woman named Lisa Montgomery, not Darlene Fisher, showed up at the home that Bobby Joe Stinnett shared with her husband, Zeb Stinnett. But at this time, Bobby Joe was alone. Zeb had left that morning for work. So this woman, Lisa, enters the home of 23-year-old Bobby Joe Stinnett, under the guise of wanting to buy one of these rat terrier puppies that Bobby Joe was selling um, and still using the fake name of Darlene. And at this time, Bobby Joe was eight months pregnant with her first child, a daughter that was to be named Victoria. On this day, Lisa and Bobby Joe spent approximately two hours together before Bobby Joe took a phone call from her mother because apparently they all lived really close to each other and her mother called and asked if when she was done with her shift, Bobby Joe could come and pick her up. Even though, she, I guess she didn't work very far from the house, she just, didn't want, she just didn't want to walk. So Bobby Joe agreed, said she would pick her up and the two hung up. And this was at about 2.30. So at this time at 2.30, Bobby Joe was still alive and fine enough to take a phone call. But her mother, whose name was Becky, by the way, uh, her shift ended and she waited outside for her daughter who never showed up. So at about 3.30, she's like, okay, screw this. I'm just going to walk home. But she decides to walk over to Bobby Joe's house, you know, to find out why her daughter never showed up. So she walks the short walk back to Bobby Joe's house and she realizes that the front door is open. So she goes in and she starts calling her daughter's name, having no idea that she's walking into an actual nightmare. Sometime after the phone call between Bobby Joe Stinnett and her mother, Lisa Montgomery had strangled the 23 year old pregnant woman with a cord that she brought with her. So it was premeditated. She then took out a large knife that she also brought with her and started to cut the baby from her womb. Apparently the pain of the at-home C-section brought Bobby Joe back to consciousness during this attack. So Lisa then started to pull on the cord again and strangled Bobby Joe until this time she was dead before taking the baby from her womb and fleeing the scene. And this all happened less than two weeks after Bobby Joe Stinnett's 23rd birthday. So when Becky walked into that home, she was horrified to find her daughter lying in a pool of her own blood with long blonde hairs clenched in her hand. And these hairs later ended up helping police know that they were looking for a female suspect. Um, but when Becky called the police to report what she had found, she said that it looked like her daughter's stomach had exploded. So paramedics came and they did what they could to try to, to try to save Bobby Joe, but she was long gone and she was pronounced dead on arrival at the hospital and her baby was missing. So police immediately started working quickly because of the time sensitivity of the case because Bobby Joe was so late, like so far along in the term of her pregnancy that 
the baby that had been cut out could be alive and could be in danger. So they immediately started working. They even called the FBI, which like, good for them because so often, I think we can uh, agree in these cases, we hear about the fact that small towns or other towns like in the John Benet Ramsey case, for example, could have had help from bigger organizations, could have had more manpower, and choose to not do it because they're having like a measuring contest, you know? And it's such a frustrating thing because it's like, these are people's lives. I know you're trying to be the big dog and I know you're trying to like have the win under your belt, but these are people's lives. Take the help where you can to perhaps solve cases and save lives or give families like some closure you know what I mean like mm. so it's just great that this police station knew that this type of case was like out of their realm right like it was a big case it's a murder case it's a fetal abduction there's a lot going on so they called the FBI for help it ended up taking police less than a day to discover that Bobby Joe Stinnett had scheduled a meeting with a woman named Darlene Fisher for the for the day that she was killed and they did this through a forensic computer investigation which is something that's just so, like, that's how you catch people now, you know what I mean? The police were able to recover all the correspondence that went back and forth between Darlene and Bobby Joe, and they actually were also able to determine that Bobby Joe and Lisa Montgomery had actually met at least once in person because they were both interested in these rat terrier dogs, and they had both been at a dog show at the same time. It was like a dog show for the rat terriers, you know, mutual interest. And there was a photo, I believe, that they were both in. Now, if they met and if they talked, I'm not sure. But I know that they were at the same place in the same group of people with the same mutual interest. Oh, my gosh, my coffee. Mm. Through the messages that went back and forth between Darlene and Bobby Joe, the police were able to get an IP address. And from the IP address, they were actually able to get an actual physical address. And this address was in a place called Melvern, Kansas, which I believe is another very small town, a couple of hours away from Bobby Joe's home in Skidmore, Missouri. And in getting this address, they also got a name for the address. And this name was Kevin Montgomery. So police head over. And when they arrive at Kevin Montgomery's home, they find a car in the driveway that matched the description of a car that one of Bobby Joe's neighbors had reported seeing in the driveway the day of Bobby Joe's murder. So in addition to the car in the driveway, police like knock on the door, Kevin Montgomery opens the door, he doesn't know what's going on, he lets them in. And police see a brand new baby, a little baby girl brand new, held in the arms of a woman. This woman was Kevin Montgomery's wife, Lisa Montgomery, not Darlene Fisher. And Lisa Montgomery claimed that this baby was her baby and she had just given birth the day before. Lisa Montgomery said that she had given birth at a birthing center in Topeka, Kansas the day before. So police are like, okay, this is easy enough to figure out. And they contact the birthing center and learn that no one named Lisa Montgomery had given birth at that birthing center. Confronted with this evidence, Lisa Montgomery admits, admits to what she did. She confesses to everything and is arrested, obviously, and then the baby who was identified through DNA as belonging to Bobby Joe was taken and returned to her father and given the name Victoria Joe. Okay, so let's talk about Lisa Montgomery, the uh, murderer and kidnapper. Lisa Marie Montgomery was born February 27th, 1968, making her a Pisces, and she grew up in a pretty dysfunctional an abusive household. And real quick, I just want to say that I'm giving you the backstory not at all to excuse any of this woman's behavior, simply to explain who she was. Lisa Montgomery's mother, Judy, was a really bad alcoholic, and by all accounts that I have seen, should not have been a mother. She was verbally and physically abusive to all of her kids, and it was reported that she would allow men to rape her daughters. Lisa apparently started drinking at a really young age, and it was to numb the pain of not only the abuse at the hands of her mother, but apparently her mother married a man, and her, this was Lisa's stepfather, and this man raped Lisa for years. Apparently, um, Lisa's mother knew about this. She knew that her husband was 
having sex with her daughter, and not only blamed Lisa for all of it, but said that if she told, bad things would happen to her. She threatened her daughter to keep the secret of her husband who was having sex with her, which is just horrible. And apparently, later, once, you know... <laughs> It's really messed up. Once Judy, Lisa's mother, got married to this uh, really stand-up guy, the two of them started to sell Lisa to men for sex. They were prostituting her out for money and services. Their daughter. And as if the abuse wasn't bad enough to make a person mentally unstable, just like in the case of Richard Ramirez, due to the prolonged abuse and head injuries caused by the abuse of her mother and her stepfather, throughout her young years, Lisa Montgomery also had continued seizures. So because her life was so, you know, absolute shit, Lisa tried to escape her family life as soon as possible, and as soon as she turned 18, she married her first husband, and this man was actually her stepbrother for another layer up you know apparently the two had not been raised together lisa's mother married divorced the the rapey guy and married another guy and this was that guy's son but she still married her stepbrother at 18 years old and lisa and her stepbrother slash husband had four children together after having these four children with her brother husband, um, she ended up having her tubes tied in 1990, and apparently she didn't want to do this, but was pressured into it by her husband. I don't know how true that is. Um, seems like it could be true based on what she does, but she had her tubes tied in 1990, and this was 14 years prior to her, her crime. And as, you know, life sometimes repeats itself, this man, brother, husband, was physically abusive to Lisa. Apparently, we just accept the love we, we think we deserve. And so she ended up divorcing him. Divorcing him. After this marriage, Lisa did end up remarrying, as, as we know, to the man she was married to at the time that she committed her crime, Kevin Montgomery. And apparently, according to her first husband, um, brother, husband, Lisa, after having her tubes tied more than once, like several times, lied and said that she was pregnant even though it was physically impossible for her to be pregnant. Now, why did she do this? We don't know. Did she want another child and couldn't have one, so she was making it up? Did she just want some attention because, you know, pregnant women get a lot of attention? We don't know. But it wasn't just Lisa's ex-husband who experienced the, uh, the pregnancy lies. Apparently, her current husband, Kevin Montgomery, was under the impression that Lisa had been pregnant several times with him prior to her crimes. Because at the time of the murder of Bobby Joe Stinnett, Lisa had been telling people that she was pregnant. So this was a thing that she did often. She would just lie about being pregnant all the time. And though a lot of people were, were onto her lies, because they were like, this chick like, is always saying she's pregnant, she never has any babies, plus her tubes were tied, some people did believe her. And of those people were her, was her husband, her current husband, Kevin Montgomery. He truly believed that she had been pregnant several times, and that at the time of the murder of Bobby Joe Stinnett, she had been pregnant. So when she came home with that baby that day, like, oh, I just gave birth, he believed that that baby was his. And I know that sounds crazy, but um, from everything that I have read, um, Kevin Montgomery seems like the sweet, simple type. You know what I mean? Just like, sweet boy. And police did look into him, and they were able to determine that he was not part of the crime. He did not know what was going on. He was just like a sweet clueless man. So initially when the investigation was first starting, all of the information wasn't out there. So police were investigating the murder under the idea that what caused the murder is that Lisa Montgomery had been pregnant and she must have had a miscarriage that sent her into like a crazy state causing her to want to steal someone else's baby because she had just lost her baby because everyone in Lisa's life thought she had been pregnant. She told everybody she was pregnant. She told her husband she was pregnant. So there was no reason at that time for them to think anything else. You know what I mean? But once it was discovered that like this lady had her tubes tied and had often lied about being pregnant. So at the time that Lisa Montgomery murdered Bobby Joe Stinnett, Lisa Montgomery and her first husband brother, you know, husband brother, 
um, we're in the middle of a custody battle. And he had said to her, like, listen, I know you're not pregnant now. I know you're always lying about being pregnant. It's it's freaking weird, dude. And I'm going to use this information against you at our custody hearing um, so that I can get full custody of the kids because you're obviously a little a little off, right? And she was like, listen, I'm going to prove you wrong when I have my baby that did not exist because she was not pregnant. So Lisa Marie Montgomery was determined to prove her ex-husband wrong and to not lose custody of her current four children. Um, so she came up with a plan to ensure that she had a baby um, to prove him wrong. And that plan, unfortunately, involved murdering Bobby Joe Stinnett. Okay, so because Lisa had taken baby Victoria across state lines when she kidnapped her. This case was a federal case and it was heard in the federal court instead of like the state court. So they were charging her with kidnapping resulting in a death and for this crime she could either get life in prison or the death penalty if she was found guilty. So initially the defense tried to say that it wasn't Lisa herself, who had murdered Bobby Joe, but that her brother Tommy had come along that day, the day of the murder, and that he was the one who murdered Bobby Joe. But they were easily able to disprove this when they looked into his alibi and found that there was no way that he could have been there. His alibi was strong, so they were like, oh shit, like we gotta rethink what we're gonna do here. So, due to uh, this plan falling through, they started coming up with the defense that Lisa was not guilty due to reasons of insanity because it wasn't that Lisa was lying about being pregnant. It was that she was suffering from pseudocysis, which is the belief that you are pregnant, where you believe truly that you are pregnant so intensely that your body follows suit with your mindset. So I looked into this and apparently it can cause your periods to slow and stop. It can cause your stomach and your boobs to grow. And it, you can even feel a baby like moving around inside you, which is just so crazy. How does the brain do that? The brain is crazy powerful. It, it's insane. It is ass bananas. So they were saying that she was suffering from this. She wasn't lying. She was just crazy and believed that she was pregnant. The problem with this is that people didn't believe that she truly believed that she was pregnant. Her story changed all the time and she didn't act like a woman who truly believed that she was pregnant. She never even went to the doctor to get any sort of prenatal care like a woman who is, who is pregnant typically does. And it's not, uh, some women don't, but she did in all of her other four pregnancies, but in this one she didn't. And she even went to the doctor during her pregnancy term for other things and never once mentioned that she was pregnant. When you fill out that little questionnaire, you have to like put like if you're pregnant or not, and she put no. And if that isn't damning enough, they also found that she had been looking online for instructions on how to do an at-home C-section. And uh, that's pretty, that's pretty, that's pretty damning, right? Like, you're not going to do that on yourself, so. So despite the defense's best efforts, on October 22nd, 2007, the jury found Lisa Montgomery guilty of her crimes after only four hours of deliberation. The jury recommended that Lisa Montgomery be put to death for her crimes, and the judge upheld this recommendation and sentenced Lisa Montgomery to be put to death by lethal injection. She would be the first woman in nearly 70 years to be executed by the federal government. So naturally, there were appeals filed. There always are. And apparently during these appeals, they had professionals testify that not only was Lisa suffering from the pseudocysis, but she was also suffering from delusions and PTSD due to her upbringing. The doctor said that because of this, Lisa's mental state and her understanding of her world around her fluctuated and due to this, her actions and her understanding of the consequences of said actions also fluctuated. It was also found and stated that due to the excessive beatings of both her parents when she was growing up and her ex-husband that Lisa had suffered 
permanent brain damage. Apparently, the extent of her mental issues and trauma was not actually revealed at the trial, but in the appeals process, but despite that fact, the appeals were still denied. So now we're going to fast forward a lot to the dreaded 2020. We're on December 8th, 2020. Lisa Montgomery was scheduled to be put to death by lethal injection. This was going to be taking place at the U.S. Penitentiary of Terry Hout, Indiana, but the execution ended up getting stayed because her attorneys, her longtime attorneys that were her attorneys through the entire trial, ended up actually contracting COVID-19. So the new execution date was set for January 21st, 2021. So just about a week ago now when you're watching this, if you're watching this when I upload it. So apparently on... January 12th, 2021, the day that Lisa was to be executed, the federal judge actually granted Lisa a stay on her execution because she needed to have a competency hearing. They needed to determine if she could understand what was happening to her and if she was mentally like there to know that she was being killed and like why she was being killed. It was theorized that she did not know why she was being executed. The stay was then voted on by the Supreme Court, and it was vacated with Lisa Montgomery's execution to be carried out immediately thereafter the ruling. Lisa Montgomery, at the age of 52, was executed by lethal injection at the United States Penitentiary in Terry Hout, Indiana. She declined giving any last word and was pronounced dead at 1.31 a.m. on January 13th, 2021. Lisa Montgomery was the first woman to be executed in 2021. She was the first woman to be executed by the federal government in nearly 70 years, and she was actually one of only four women to ever be executed by the federal government. And I'm sure you can imagine, but this case is incredibly divisive. Put the general, like, debate on whether or not the death penalty should even be a thing aside, this case, there are a ton of people who are obviously just like, Lisa Montgomery, like, and are happy that she was executed because I think we can all agree with one fact, and that's that this, what happened is absolutely horrible. What she did is unforgivable and, and, and terrible. And I try to think, I sit here and I try to think of something that is worse than what she did. And I honestly, I can't come up with anything. Nothing comes to mind. 23 years old. Bobby Jo Stinnett was 23 years old, expecting her first ever baby. The fear this woman must have felt, not only for herself, but because of that instinctive, protective nature that is automatically in women and in mothers, the fear she must have felt for her unborn baby. It must have been completely overwhelming and completely terrifying, and I can't even imagine. But there are people still who feel sympathy for Lisa Montgomery and think that she shouldn't have been executed, that she should have instead gotten life in prison or in a mental institution to help her deal with whatever it is that's going on in her head, to deal with the trauma that she has from what happened to her growing up, and to deal with whatever trauma she was likely feeling because of the crime that she committed. There is no denying that what she went through growing up is absolutely terrible. Like, that kind of abuse, your eggs are bound to be scrambled, right? Like, but the prosecution never tried to argue that, that something was wrong with Lisa's brain. All they tried to argue is that she wasn't suffering from pseudocysis and that her mental illness, though there and real, did not affect her to the point that she wasn't legally responsible for the horrifying crime that she committed. Because Bobby Jo is, is dead. She's gone forever. But her daughter did survive, and her daughter is now 16 years old, and I'm sure her birthday is just like a constant reminder of the fact that her mother was murdered because her mother was murdered on her birthday. Reports do say that um, Victoria Jo lives in Skidmore, Missouri still, and that her family has done the best they could to make sure she had a normal upbringing and to make sure that she had a, a good level of privacy, so I'm going to leave her there. And that, my friends, is the story of the murder of Bobby Joe Stinnett, the fetal abduction of Victoria Joe Stinnett, and the life and aftermath of the crime that was committed by the murderer and kidnapper, Lisa Marie Montgomery. What 
do you think? I know that there can be varying opinions and and ideas when it comes to this case, and I know that a lot of those are going to be driven by emotions, because this is a very emotional case, which sometimes makes people react more emotionally than than intellectually, you know, which is fine. We're people. We're allowed to have feelings. It's how we act on those feelings that really matter. I know that they can just get the best of us, and I hope this case wasn't too much, because it's like a lot. It's a lot. But, you know, though emotionally this case can seem very black and white, I get that, we need to acknowledge, maybe, that there is a lot of gray area in this case. Whether you want to, like, take that into consideration or not, it is there. And that's how the death penalty is in general. And I know that a lot of people I did see, um, thought that Lisa Montgomery's execution was rushed because the Trump administration has been, like, pushing out executions pretty, pretty quickly as of late. Um, and they say that it was rushed because Joe Biden's about to be sworn in and he's pretty anti-death penalty, but I, I'm not going to give an opinion on that. I would just like to know what you think about that. But again, the thing I think that we can all agree on is that this is just so horrible, man. Bobby Justin, it was only 23 years old. That is so incredibly young. That's like the beginning, you know? Tw the, you're, <sighs> she didn't even get the chance to grow into, like, the woman she would become and the mother she would become. Your 20s are such a good time for that. That's when all of that, like, who you're gonna be happens. She didn't get the, um, the breath of fresh air that comes with turning 30 that I experienced. She was robbed of that. She was robbed of the opportunity to grow into, like, this strong woman and this mother and to meet her daughter and to hold her little baby. All of that was taken from her. And everyone in Bobby Joe's life was also robbed of Bobby Joe. Victoria Joe doesn't have a mother. Zeb doesn't have a wife. Her mother doesn't have a daughter. It's just, like, so, so sad. Bobby Joe did not get to experience all the things that life may have had in store for her, and that is a tragedy beyond measure. But anyways, guys, that completes this video. I hope that it was interesting and informative and gave you everything that you would want as far as information when looking into this case. And of course, I hope you enjoyed it because I always want you to enjoy what I'm putting out. Please let me know of any cases you would like to see me cover because as this video in itself, uh, shows you. I do take all of your recommendations seriously. Every time you leave one, I put it on my list because I know that you're filled with good ideas and good taste. Otherwise, you would not be here. Of course, before you leave, make sure to join the Brat Pack by subscribing and ringing the bell because I put out a new Morbid Makeup video every week. And if you would like to hang out more consistently on the day-to-day, -day, uh, you can follow me on Instagram or Twitter. I'm on there all the time, and they're both just Bratterstein like my namesake here. And with all of that said, thank you for being here when you could literally be anywhere else on the internet. That's tight. You're tight. And I hope to see you in my next video.